Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I told you when I got this Mercury out. Actually, it was two days ago. I was going to fix this door lock actuator the next day, and it was miserably hot, so I'm just getting to it today. So, um, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The first thing I like to do when I'm working on a window or a door lock or something in one of these old Mercury's or Lincoln's, you hear this uh, automatic seat back release. You know, that's energized the whole time the door is open. And you've got one, two, three, four, five dome lights on. So you've got two seat release actuators and five dome lights going. And rather than undoing the battery and messing up the clock, I like to just pull this out and unplug it. So I'm going to get this set up on a little tripod and show you how to do that really fast. Okay, no tools required. Just get a hold of this thing, wiggle it back and forth a little bit. It's not in there tight. Pull it out, and it's got a it's got a little plug with it's got rubber going up around here. But just wiggle it and pull. You hear that? The seat back releases go off, and all the dome lights go out. And I just push this thing up here in here just a little bit. I've never had one fall down in there to where you can't get it out. Normally, if it does fall down a little bit, you can grab it with needle nose pliers and just set this aside until we're done. That way, nothing's draining the battery while we're working on this. Then, we're going to grab, just get a hold of this little foam filler around the door handle and pull it out. I'm going to get all this done here before I put it on the tripod so you guys can see what I'm doing. And you've got a 7 16 bolt back here to take this door handle off. So then I wanted to point out real quick. This is the door lock actuator I got. It came out of a Fox Body Mustang. It's the same thing. I think that Ford went to these in the... Um, Ford's Mercury's and Lincoln's in 78. Honestly, I think 77 and back still had this old school. Honestly, here let me see if I can. It was it was really it was the exact same motor, same plug and everything. It was just made onto a different assembly with this half moon gear that goes back. So I think 77 back, this is what you've got. But you know, the rod attaches to the door latch the same way and see here when they started doing this this is the this is the screw we're going to take out for this door lock actuator but you see this dimple and this dimple that's where this thing would have been mounted there would have been holes screwed in those holes and that's where these were mounted 77 and back but 78 you just got one screw right there holding the bracket in for the door lock actuator. So this door lock is just dead. Like, see, the driver's side's working fine, and this one's not making any noise whatsoever. And I don't, I don't really feel any need to do any testing. I know that there's something going on with that motor because I've worked on so many of these. So I'm going to get this set up on a tripod, and we're going to get this door panel off. All right, I hope I'm not going to be in your guys' way too much. I recently had a conversation on Facebook about these. There's no screws behind these. In 73 and 74, yeah, you had to pop out a couple little filler plates, and there were screws back there. But 75, 6, 7, 8, there are no screws back there. So the first thing we're going to do is take out this Phillips screw. Don't use any power tools or anything on these old brittle armrests. All you got to do is look at them and they'll crack. So pull up and out on the front. Don't pull up on the back because you've got these little metal tabs that's holding the back down. Now I can tell you that I've had this door panel off twice because I remember fixing this door lock once before years ago. And then after that later I added illuminated entry to this car so I would have had the door panel off to add that too so I know this door panel has been off twice and 
I never really tighten anything very tight at all, so these shouldn't be tight. This is a 11 32nd. They're just barely snug. You've got two on the window switch, two on the door lock switch. A nine millimeter will work on this as well. Okay. Those are going to stay there when we pull the door panel off. Um, you've got one Phillips screw right up front here. I think they're all the same length, but I'm going to lay them in a roll a row from front to back so I know which hole they came out of. One here. Actually the front one is longer than that center one, which makes sense because this comes out a little bit more than that. And that one's the same length as the front one. So the center one is a short one. Now, that should be all that's holding the, the door panel on, honestly, other than the, the clips that we gotta take out. And before you start this job, I'm pretty sure I've never changed these clips. And again, I believe in 77 and back they were still using the old wire type clips. I think this was a 78 thing across the board for Ford Mercury and Lincoln. I could be wrong but I think if you've got a 78 you're going to have these or like a 79 mark. I, th I think you're going to have the plastic ones so I like these a lot better than those old metal ones that you have to fight. So let's just get behind here see what happens. Actually, they still feel like they're biting pretty good. And if they're good, I won't waste them. Them two packages was 14 freaking dollars. Yeah, that one's not holding so very good. Oh. I got ahead of myself. Be sure to go ahead and get this door handle off before you start pulling on this thing because you'll definitely crack the armrest. It's hard to concentrate and talk at the same time, sorry. Don't try to pull it off with that thing still there. to shove these wires back through this hole and the door panel should just lift off. And see with the grand marquee and the marquee brome you got this insulation on the back. These door panels are really heavy. So much better than the base marquee with the really plain Jane door panels. They really, you got what you paid for when you stepped up to a Brome or a Grand Marquis. So, set this thing over somewhere. And I think it's strange that I don't really, I think this is probably my black tape here. That's still nice and sticky from the factory. Oh, 
Oh, we got our moisture barrier off. Thought I could see in there better than I'm seeing, so I'm going to get a light. Let me grab a light. Okay, so can you guys see the door lock actuator in there? That's actually got a 78 number on it. I think it's the original one. I'll show you what I think went wrong the first time I re or worked on this thing, but I can see right there how it's got just a little round bushing that the rod goes in which tells me it's different the one than the one on the Mustang. So let again, let me get it set up on a tripod and show you how we're going to remove that. Okay, I've got a door latch here. Actually, this is not even a Ford. This is out of a Chrysler 300, I think. And here's what I normally expect to find when I get in there. I expect to see a clip like this. And see, that's what's doing it. And when you do, you just reach in there and push your thumb on that, spin it over, and pull this out. But that's not what is in this car. Um, what this car's got is, say, it's a hole, another hole like this, and there's a plastic bushing in it that pops in there just like these do. And then, then this rod looks like this, and it, it's, it goes in and up like that. And then... That's how it's working. So when I get that door lock actuator loose out of the door, I'm just gonna spin it like this and pull it out of that uh, bushing that is, it's in the hole in that one. This one just doesn't have one, but see what I mean? It goes just like that. You gotta spin it and pull it straight back. So that's what I'm fixing to do. So, this is a pretty good sized Phillips screw here. I think I got you guys aimed on it. Yeah, so we're just going to loosen this screw with this big screwdriver. I'm going to set that screw right down here behind the door along with the screwdriver. And actually, I'm going to grab this and see if I can show you guys what I'm doing as I do it. And again, you're not seeing in there very well. So see, it's got that black bushing where the rod goes in. So I'm just going to get a hold of it. And just tilt it back and pull it straight out. Yeah, see? There we go. That's all there is to it. See, now that bushing is just, uh, if I can get on it, sitting there empty. That one right there. the same as the other one where it just goes in and up like that so that's all I did to get that out I didn't have to use my thumb to release a clip so I can tell already that we got to swap the rod out so that's why I grabbed this little flat screwdriver because you can get right here and just pry and push and it will come right unplugged without breaking anything. This thing has definitely seen better days. So, it's just, that's probably all that's wrong with it is this rubber. I don't know. Yeah, it feels like the rubber's just wrapped around there and got it froze up. Let's plug it back in and see what it does.
Yeah, the rubber has just wrapped around that thing so much it's just stuck to it, it can't work. So honestly, you probably don't even really need to change the rod. We need to find another rubber boot. I could take it off that Mustang one, but I also want to show you how to swap out the rod if you have to. Yeah, this door lock actuator will work. Now, that's all that happened. That rubber had just got so sticky, it stuck to it and it grabbed it and spun it around. So, I'm going to get you guys set up on a smaller tripod over there on the workbench and show you how to swap out a rod. Because I need to do it for a friend anyway. He sent me some, like I said in the last video. So... Let's get over there and I'll show you how to swap out the rod if this is not your problem. All right, guys, I hope you can see me. Um, since my door lock actuator I think is fine, except it's pretty dry, I'm just going to put some drops of, I don't know if you guys ever heard of this stuff. It's Duralube that they offered on a TV commercial years ago. And I bought a bunch of it in the cans. Well, I heard they were discontinuing it, so I bought a bunch because I liked it that much. The cans all lost their pressure, so I poked holes in them and put it in this jar, and I just use a dropper. So, I'm just going to drop it on this rod, let it run down in there. And then put the lid back on this and set it out of the way so I don't knock it over. Yeah, that's making it work a lot smoother. Well, I went up too far, but... I think it's going to work fine in my car. So, what I'm going to do, since the rubber's all destroyed, finish peeling the rest of this off. You know, those chances are you won't get this lucky and you'll still have to find one. But I'm going to use my original one since I can. That's the whole point of this is, you know, this is out of a Mustang. This one's out of a Bronco. The rod is even longer. But you can swap them out. So I'm going to do that. For my buddy that sent me those for his LTD. But right now, I'm just going to try to rob the rubber off of this one. And it's already kind of split at the top. And I'm not that concerned about it because the simple fact that my car, honestly rarely sees the light of day, let alone rain or snow or any elements that's going to hurt this thing. It's got a wire tie on it. So... Then we got to pry this bracket up and over. It's not that easy. These brackets are tough. Once you get one off, it's not bad. So I'm just going to slide this other rubber off the Mustang one. Down on here. Now we're going to have two part numbers. We got a 78 part number and what did I say? A 92 part number. But that's okay. I ain't figuring on anyone else working on this car. We got to find our holes that they came through. Hope I'm staying in the frame for you guys.
And I grabbed this wire tie. I think we can go ahead and pull it up here and just go ahead and bite it a little bit. Well, I gotta start it first. Jeez. Now, we gotta get this thing back on. Oh, I was gonna point out too, and you'll see that in the other one, a lot of times, I think I already said something, these rubber things get so soft. If you hear your door locks working, or something bouncing around in there when you hit the door lock switch, but you're, your door locks aren't going up and down, in a lot of cases in the 70s, these rubber bushings just got so hot and melted, just basically like that rubber boot did on my other one, and these things just fall out, so, the bracket's not holding it, and this thing's just sitting in there spinning and bouncing around. That's what's going on if you're hearing something and the door locks plunger's not going up and down. So now we gotta try to get this pulled back over it. Put one side in first. And I can usually do it with my fingers. Or not. I think I'm still gonna have to pry it with a screwdriver. These things are tough. And when you've got these pushed through these holes, you can't shove these rubber things up in there. It just won't go. You've got to get it pried up over it. Oh, that flew out. Dang it. Well. We'll try this again, see if I can make a fool out of myself. Yep, awful close. <laughs> it's getting caught on that bushing, that rubber bushing. I may want to put it in a vise. I say they come off a heck of a lot easier than they go back on. Making a fool out of me. There, we got it. And I'm going to go ahead and open up these channel locks and just squeeze it together a little. In case I stretched it any. There. Honestly, I think this is going to work in my car now. So, before we do anything else, let's go over here and look. Try it out. Alright guys, I had to turn the fan up. Jeez, it's warm. Alright, let's see if this works. It sure feels to me like it should. And that means it's going to keep the original 1978 one in there. So plug it in before you put it back in because it's a lot easier that way. And then remember, we're just going to put, stick this in the hole and tilt it up like that. And it's going to be retained where it belongs. Phillips screw back in. There 
And let's see if it works. Oh, sounds strong too. Yeah, so that's all that was, was the, that rubber had gotten so hot and sticky and melted and just got twisted around that rod and it, it just had it completely froze up. And now, it works like new again. It's the second time I've had to do something with the door lock in this, this door. Um, normally, let me grab this. Normally before I put this back together, I would go ahead, put some grease in this window track and on this bar here. But as you can see, it's really quite greased up from when I was in here the last time. It's working fine, so we're just gonna leave it alone. So, let me get you set back up on the tripod and we'll get this door panel put back together. All right. We need to go ahead I sure don't have much room in here either. I'm not going to swap out all these because they cost so dang much. Let me see if you guys are on there. You can see it good enough. It wasn't sticking real good at the top and bottom, so I'm just going to like maybe swap out every other one and just keep the rest of these in case I need them because these bottom ones really seem to be holding well. I'll show you something else too. I hate to make these videos so long, but I like pointing things out. You guys see this here? If this car had manual windows, like you could get like, in a Grand Marquis, you could get power window delete. They were standard, you know, but you could get power window delete. And here's where the crank would poke through right there. And believe it or not, it would be right here below this wood trim and this cloth. Is where the window crank would have been. And we'll go ahead and do some rod swapping after I get this put back together. So if you guys want to go ahead and fast forward to that. You're more than welcome. There's six in a package, so I'll go ahead and use all of them. At least I'll save that other package. I'll just swap out like the corners. This car rarely gets driven, especially anybody on the passenger side. And I'll swap out one of these metal ones on the bottom. Alright, that's done. Yeah, if you guys want to go ahead and fast forward to where I swap out those rods, you can do that and come back to this. But I just like to go ahead and put stuff back together so people see exactly what's going on. I need to turn that key off too. I turn it on to run that window. It's still on. I 
guess I did turn it off. You know, line this up where the original holes were. And I'm not lined up there. I take the shrunk some. You can tuck these down in these cracks. Okay, it's lined up pretty good. Is the door lock still working? Yes, it is. Get your switches pulled back through. Remember the shorter one is in the center and just snug them, don't over tighten them or you're going to crack it. You can see the door, the armrest sucking up towards it. door handle back on. filler goes in there just like that. It's shaped kind of just like the armrest. It slips right over the door handle and just feed it back in the hole. And it falls right back into place.
just snug. Remember if you these little keepers in the back, push down, put in our final Phillips screw. working fine so like I said this thing's got little locators so you can only plug it in the correct way just look down in there and aim it plug it in and pop it right back in the hole Just like that, you're done. So that's all there is to it. If you guys aren't able to use your original one, if it just doesn't do anything or anything like that, I'm going to show you how to swap the rods out of one for like a 80s, 90s, up through 91 Bronco truck, and 80s, 90s Crown Vicks and Grand Marquis and Fox Body Mustangs and all that. We're going to do that next, but if this helped you out, you can stop watching now. But I'm just going to go ahead and incorporate that other part with this video. So, if you don't need me for the rest of this, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see how to swap out the rods, stick with me. And we'll go get it taken care of. Alright guys, so... If you can't use your original Ford actuator, which the way these rods are bent, I'm assuming these are out of his rear doors. I don't think that's a front door rod. But anyway, he sent me these from Oregon. And see, this is all mushy and just shot. That's what happened to mine the first time, I remember. And But the ones, I told him to get them for a Bronco, truck or Bronco off eBay, so he did. So that's this one, and these rubber bushings are just fine, but we can't use this plastic bracket because it's not, it's not threaded for the Phillips screw to go in to hold it in. We've got to use the metal one, which, okay, yeah, he did send it. Um, he tried to do this himself first, and it didn't work, so he just couldn't figure it out. So he asked if he could send it to me. So I'm going to attempt to show you how to do this. It's not fun. It's not hard, it's just, it's tedious. And there's one little clip that just drives you nuts. So, let's get this one. We're gonna, he sent this one in a bag that he had apart. And I'll get that back together, but I wanna show you to start to finish. So, say you've got one out of your Ford Mercury or Lincoln. Get this old boot off of it. I keep looking to make sure you guys are in frame. I don't want to use this boot either. I want to use the other one off the trucker Bronco one. Okay. Now this 70s one has got a little metal clip right here that we need to pull off below here. get behind it or if you want to push it off however you want to get it off I figured it'd be easier to pull it off but we may just have to push it all right so yeah that little clip comes off and then there's three little ball bearings in here that you don't want to lose the rod just pulls out then but don't lose these ball bearings There's 
still on in here. Okay, so there's the little ball bearings. We're not going to use this one. This is the one that he says is no good. So, we're going to take the Bronco, truck and Bronco one, out of its bracket. Ow, pinched me. Remember, we can't use the plastic bracket. We've got to use this metal one, so we might as well go ahead now and get these rubber bushings out of this one. And get them put in the metal one. tough. I'm sticking a little pick down through there just to have something to pull on the center of it. So the metal bracket that's threaded for the Phillips screw in the back of the door has the bushings in it that we're going to need. Now this Bronco one, some of them have wire ties. This one has like another little C-clip on it that we're just going to pop off. And we're going to pull the rubber up off of it. Now, this little clip right here is the one that's a pain. You got to get this little clip. It's just, it's so tight on that little rim around there. Getting it off, I don't think is really so bad. It's getting it back on that you got to fight. And this screwdriver won't even fit between it. Right here. Okay, so again, we've got three ball bearings in here that's going to come out. And then the Bronco rod will come out. We want to put the LTD one in there. So let me think. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and use everything that we took off the Bronco. We even use this clip. We need some grease. I'm going to show you why. I saw some grease in the... Okay, I saw it in the bottom of this. I'm going to get some grease out of the bottom of this where it was plugged in. And I'm going to put it right here in these holes. Like so. That way, 
they will hold these bearings when you put them in the holes the grease will hold on to them this clip I'm going to put that on the floor and I'm going to flatten it out with this hammer All right, so that's going to go on there. Remember this, like a little half that slips down over that, so it's going to go on here. And we'll continue to put these balls in there with the grease holding them. You better go ahead and put this in there, it's going to fall out. To fall right through it if you don't put the rod in there first. Bear with me, it's been a while since I did this. I do have a video on it for the trucks though. Okay, so that slips down over at this sleeve to keep the ball bearings from falling out. They're all in there. Now we got to get this clip, and this is the part that sucks. We've got to get this clip to snap that back down over that little lip, and it's harder than it looks. I'm going to try this thing. I'm not even sure what this is, but I've used it before. I think it's some kind of a hose clamp tool. You guys are probably going to bounce on me. Didn't even start. See, it's just really tough to get it. And that's what he was fighting. That's why he sent them to me. I told him I would get them, and I will. I may have to think of a different way. He said he had his fingers bleeding. I'd rather avoid that if possible. But this is a good way to save yourself some money and do it yourself. I haven't said a cuss word yet, so that's pretty good for me. Okay, I'm going to pause it for a while. If the damn thing goes on, I'll tell you how I did it. Okay, guys, this is what wound up working. Let's see if I can get this in here better. I put this thing around here. You know, I couldn't get a socket around it. Put it on there and close it like that. And I hit it front and back. And it is snapped on there, just like it's supposed to be. So now we want to go ahead and put some more of this Duralube in here. See, that makes it much, it glides so much better. So, we're going to use the rubber off of the Bronco truck one. I 
I think he's got this rod a little bit bent. I think that I'm going to see if I can bend it back a little without hurting something. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's see if we can get this through here. Line up your holes there. Get the pin pins through there. It's not happening. You gotta get it really stretched down over it first because it wants to overlap. There's that one. There's that one. Gonna see if this plastic thing that was on the truck Bronco one will slip over here. And it did. And we know this one works, so I will test it before I send it back to him just to make sure I've got some things over here I can test it with. But that's how you swap out the rod. We needed this cr crooked one for the LTD that he's got. And his door lock actuator was no good out of the LTD, so he, I had him to get him from a truck and a Bronco. And we just took the rod out of the LTD one and put it in the Bronco. You, see, you guys see me do it. Then we got to fight this again. It doesn't matter which side this goes on because that rod will spin around. But we got to get this back on it. The threaded one for the LTD. You'd think as many times as I'd done this, I would have a way to just spread it out and be done. But I don't. You know what? I just give me an idea. I'm going to put this in the vise, spread it out, and then smash it back on. I'll be right back. See what that did. Oh yeah, much easier. I just put one end of that in the in the vise, put channel locks on the other end, and pried it open. Now we're gonna open up the channel locks and squeeze it back on. Just like that. It's ready to go back in the LTD. So, that's all there is to it. Again, I say it every time. If you like this video, if it helped you, please put it in the comments. Let me know. And hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching.